Alex, you were just talking about the way in which an example of stories that aren't reported that are positive about oil and gas. And there's also negative stories about kind of so-called green policies that don't get reported, uh, I think, for the same reasons. And this is one really interesting one comes from this left-wing magazine, Commune, where it makes some really interesting points about how non-green the Green New Deal is, including points that I have not heard made or at least not commonly made uh, from fossil fuel supporters. And so the article is called Between the Devil and the Green New Deal by this guy Jasper Burns. And he points out that he starts by pointing out that like energy is never clean and even noted that the worst industrial accident in U.S. history, Hawk's Nest, in uh, from 1930 was, as he put it, said, a renewable energy disaster actually involved a hydroelectric plant. Um, but he goes on to point out that um, the New- Green New Deal in particular rel- would rely on massive amounts of mining for the materials for solar and wind, and that that process is anything but clean. And that if you consider what would happen with a timetable, like we're going to have zero emissions by 2030, you would just need a lot more mining operations. And whenever you have this kind of rush to cash in on a government bonanza, you would very likely get a lot of, you know, marginal uh, producers, people cutting corners in a really slipshod way in order to cash on. And so if you're worried about mining, this is not just going to take something that's inherently has a lot of byproducts that you have to worry about, but it would make it far worse. And that it's not just the mining that isn't green, it's that we need fossil fuels to make renewables work. And the way he puts it is, just because the United States encrusted with solar panels releases no greenhouse gases, that doesn't mean its technologies are carbon neutral. It takes energy to get those minerals out of the ground, energy to shape them into batteries and photo, uh, I, I can never pronounce this, photovoltaic, help Voltaic. me out. Voltaic. Voltaic, I always mess that up. Solar panels and giant rotors for windmills, energy to dispose of them when they wear out. Mines are worked primarily by gas-burning vehicles. The container ships that cross the world's seas bearing the good freight of renewables burn so much fuel that they are responsible for 3% of planetary emissions. Um, And the whole thing is well worth reading. But what was just so refreshing is that, I mean, he, uh, at least in this particular instance, was doing something that Green New Deal supporters are emphatically not doing, which is looking at the full impact of their policies. And instead, it's just the way that it's treated is, well, look, this is restricting fossil fuels. So it's automatically seen as green and moral versus a real serious account of, well, let's really think about what this policy would mean and decide if the if the benefits outweigh the costs. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about this kind of thing. I'm certainly glad to see more honesty, but it's it's interesting that you're getting, in a sense, it's somebody who's more consistently applying the minimum impact standard. So they're saying, yeah. and there's a guy named Ozzy Zayner who wrote a book called Green Illusions, who's, who's, who's big on this. And their, their focus is, well, no, actually, all, there is no energy that is green, that has minimum impact. And look at all of these things. And, and they will point out usually very true things and they tend to be much more even-handed. And so that's, that's valuable kinds of inf- kind of information, but their standard is so focused on let's minimize our impact. And for instance, when they're talking about something like cargo ships, they're not talking about, well, this is amazing. Look at, look at how much these ships benefit our lives. And that's so much more important than a little bit of warming. And so it's, you want a combination of you, you want the right standard and then to use, to use the right standard, then you, you want to be really even handed and precise in comparing different kinds of uh, of alternatives, but if you have the the minimum impact standard, that's a that is a completely impracticable standard. You can't actually do it in practice consistently. So it always needs to be applied inconsistently, and it's often because it always needs to be applied inconsistently because it would invalidate any kind of activity. What always happens is people always use it uh, in a very biased way. So they'll say, you know, oh, this is fossil fuels are dirty and then they'll ignore the dirtiness of solar panels because 
you know, because they, they have some sort of agenda and it could be they want to just destroy fossil fuels because they're actually efficient and that would that would be something, or it might be maybe more rarely, it's just somebody who has an interest in solar, but whatever it is, it's anytime you advocate an impossible moral standard, it just opens, it paves the way for people to use it opportunistically. 